Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons channel and in this video I will show you how to design such a part in FreeCAD. Of course, the goal of this lesson is not only to design this type of part, but based on it, I want to show you the basic operations of creating 3D solids in FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a fully free 3D CAD system in which we can create our own 3D models, for example, for 3D printing. FreeCAD can be used in any way. We can use this system to create both hobby projects and commercial projects. Ok, let's move to design this part in FreeCAD. Start a new project in the Part Design Workbench. First, we will create a sketch on the XZ plane. Here, draw a circle. For now, the diameter of the circle is not important. Now select the Polyline Drawing Tool and draw a polyline so that it starts on the Y axis and somewhere above the circle. Here, let's also note that I have enabled automatic constraints and automatic removal of redundant constraints. You should also have these options enabled on your side. If you don't have these options enabled, turn this option on. Now, we will constrain the start of the polyline to the Y axis. When you hover the cursor over the Y axis, the Y axis will be highlighted. Now, when you click the left mouse button on the Y axis, the start of the polyline will be constrained to the Y axis meaning that simply the first point of the polyline will lie on the y-axis and will be constrained to the y-axis. Next, place the second point of the polyline also on the y-axis, approximately in this place, meaning when the y-axis is highlighted, click the left mouse button to place the second point of the polyline here. Then, for the third point, draw this point approximately here. And for the fourth point, place the fourth point of the polyline on the x-axis. Here, Similar to how the x-axis is highlighted when you hover the cursor over it, we will click the left mouse button to constrain this point to the x-axis. Then place the last point of the polyline also on the x-axis but outside the circle, meaning click here with the left mouse button. The polyline drawing is still active, but at this point we will finish drawing this shape. To end the polyline drawing command, and to end any other command in the sketcher, we right click. Here, in this case, we finished drawing the polyline, but the polyline drawing command is still active, so we right click again to finish this command. Now, what about these constraints? Here we constrained the points of the polyline to the x-axis and the y-axis, and now, as you can see when I grab this point, I can only move this point along the x-axis. In this case, I can only move this point along the y-axis. The constraints are responsible for defining certain relationships and geometric restrictions so that the geometry has its specific place relative to the coordinate systems or relative to other geometries. OK, let's move on. Let's add some more constraints here. Now I would like this point to be constrained to this circle and similarly, I would like this point to be constrained to that circle. To do this, we select the point, select the circle and choose the constraint. Now this point has been constrained to this circle. When I move this point, the diameter of the circle also changes. The diameter of the circle can change because it has not yet been specified. We have not defined a specific diameter for the circle, so here we have the points constraint with the circle. When we change the position of this point, the diameter of the circle also changes. We will do the same with this point. I select the point, select the circle, and choose the constraint. Now, when I change the position of this point, the position of this point also changes because this point is constrained to the circle. By changing the position of this point, we also change the diameter of the circle, so we also change the position of this point. This constraint specifies that this point must lie on this circle, and additionally, we have a constraint that specifies that this point must also lie on the y-axis, meaning in this case we can move this point along the y-axis, and it also must lie on the circle. Thus, when we change the diameter of the circle, The length of this line and the length of this line will simply change. OK, to create the part that I showed you at the beginning, we need what could be considered half of the profile of this part, since we will create this part by revolving the sketch around the specified axis. We need to remove unnecessary fragments of geometry here, and that unnecessary fragment of geometry will be part of the circle. 
To trim some geometry, we select the trim command and then select the fragment of geometry we want to trim. We simply click the left mouse button on the fragment of geometry we want to remove and this geometry has been trimmed from one boundary to another. Now I press Ctrl plus Z. You don't need to do this. But if I clicked on this circle from this side, then this fragment of the circle would simply be removed. I press Ctrl plus Z and click from this side and this fragment of the circle has been removed from one boundary to another. Okay, we have a preliminarily defined shape, but as you can see we can still change the dimensions of this shape because the dimensions are not defined. We have defined certain constraints, certain points are related, but we do not have dimensions specified here so we do not even know the dimensions of this part, but we can still change those dimensions freely. And now, we will proceed to define fixed dimensions for this part. First, let's add the diameter of this fragment of the circle that remains here. We select the diameter dimensioning, click the left mouse button on this command, and click on this fragment of the circle. Here, we specify the diameter of this circle, enter 50 millimeters here, and press enter to confirm. Next, let's dimension the length of this line, Select this dimension, click on this line, and here also enter 50 millimeters. As you can see, the sketch is slowly changing. Some geometries are changing their color to green, which indicates that these geometries are fully defined. However, some geometries are still white, and here we have information that the sketch is still not constrained, and we have one degree of freedom. We need to define one more dimension, which is the length of this line. We select this dimension, click on this line, and here we enter 10 millimeters, and press enter to confirm. Now the entire sketch has changed color to green, which means the sketch is fully constrained, and its dimensions and its position are fully defined. This means that we can't freely change the dimensions and shape of this sketch by pulling some geometry. If we want to make any changes here, we simply need to edit the selected dimensions. For example, here I edit this dimension to 55 millimeters, and the shape of the sketch has been slightly changed, but the sketch is still green. It is still fully constrained, and it is precisely because this sketch is fully constrained that when we make some changes, we reduce the risk of damaging the sketch. Because if this sketch were not fully constrained, sometimes such situations can arise that when we introduce some dimension or change some dimension, and other geometries are not fully defined, the entire sketch may become distorted. When creating 2D geometry, based on which we later create 3D models, we strive to ensure that the sketch is fully constrained. OK, we have completed the sketch, I close the sketch, and now, based on this sketch, we will create a 3D solid by revolving the sketch around the specified axis. And this is done by the revolution command, let's select this command. As you can see, by default, such a model has been created. This is what I wanted. This model was created by revolving the sketch 360 degrees around the vertical axis of the sketch. In this case, the vertical axis of the sketch coincides with the base Z axis, so the sketch we created here is rotated 360 degrees around the Z axis. And based on this, such a solid is created. We click OK to confirm, and we have a simple model. Next, we will create another sketch, select Create Sketch, and also choose the X, Z plane. And here, let's draw a circle in a way like this. In a moment, we will add dimensions. And now, I right-click and would like to add the distance from the center of the circle to the origin of the coordinate system. As you can see, I cannot select this point because the model obscures my view a bit, but we can switch to the section view. From the sketch menu, select view section. and now this point is already visible, we can select this point and add dimensions here. The section view is like a view onto the plane of the sketch. Everything that is above the plane of the sketch here will be removed, grayed out during sketching. It simply will not obscure our view, and we have a view on the plane of the sketch. Okay, we select these two points, first select this dimension, and here we enter 25 millimeters. Next, we select this dimension, select this point, this point, and here we also enter 25 millimeters. Now we select the diameter dimensioning. Select the circle, and here for the diameter of the circle, we enter 45 millimeters. Okay, 
The sketch is fully constrained, we close the sketch, and now based on this sketch we will remove material from this solid. Here we will add a pocket operation. Select this operation, and as you can see the material has already been removed. However, I would like this material to be removed through the entire solid, so as the pocket type I choose through all. As you can see it has only been performed in one direction, but we have the option symmetric to plane. By selecting this option, the material will be removed symmetrically in both directions, from the plane through the entire solid, we click OK to confirm. OK, we have something like this on one side, and now I would like to keep the same on the other side. We can approach this by creating another sketch, we can also draw another circle in this sketch, but we can also use the mirror operation. In this example, we will use the mirror operation. Select this operation, choose the mirror operation, and as you can see in the preview, something like this has been done by default. We simply mirrored this operation relative to the vertical axis of the sketch, and here this vertical axis of the sketch coincides with the base YZ plane. Let's select the base YZ plane here, and we have the same effect. Click OK because this is what we wanted. Next, with the control key, select these edges. OK, here as you can see this edge is split, so we need to select both halves of this edge with the control key. Select the fillet command and add a fillet of 1mm and click OK. And we have something like this. Now, just as an interesting note, I will show you how to quickly create a thread here. Select this face, choose Create Sketch, and draw any circle whose center will coincide with the origin of the coordinate system. The diameter is not relevant. We close the sketch, and now select the whole operation. This operation automatically creates holes. Here, for the profile, choose Isometric Regular Profile. For the thread size, choose M12 and check the options Threaded and Model Thread. If you want, you can check the Update View option to see how it will look in the preview. And click OK to confirm. And we have such a part. Here, we can also add a chamfer. Select this edge, choose the chamfer operation, and add a chamfer of 1mm. Click OK, and in this way, we created something like this. And here's another quick tip. If you want to set a color for the solid, you can right-click on the body and select Random Color. And while we are on quick tips, sometimes a situation may arise where you have zoomed in or out of the model too much, and to quickly show the entire model in the working area, click this Fit All icon, and the entire model will be displayed in the working area. And we will finish here. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to this channel.